Hello everyone and welcome back to another review, honestly. Normally we have guides, but today we're going to review Valtherian Arc Hero School Story 2. Now this is not a developer's code or anything like that. As of recording, it is early morning on the 24th of June. The game released on the 22nd. My physical copy arrived in the mail yesterday, so when I woke up at 9 o'clock in the evening, I had it available. We did a about a three hour long first impression stream and so on. So this is not a detailed, hey, I've had 60 hours with it kind of review. First impressions, I actually like this game. I do. That said, I do have some nits to pick. Um, this game is rated, I believe it's e either E for everyone or E7 plus here in the U.S., uh, pretty similar, probably like Peggy 7 plus in, you know, Europe and so on. This is a game that is intended okay for young kids. However, let's go into to the opening sequence to this, because there's no voice acting at all in this game. Everything is reading. So for older readers, this opening sequence, while fast, we can usually keep up for it. I don't think younger readers who are struggling with their reading can keep up with this. And it's so fast that as a like even for a streamer i could not keep up with this to read it out loud for the stream so let's try that out here this is my first nit to pick i wish that this was a little with a little slower a little more took a little more time with the reading aspects so i'm going to try to read this out loud as we go ready oh before we even get that here's my second thing there is exactly one save file on the game it is an autosave only. So for people like myself who do streaming and stuff like that, or for people who have shared the same console or the same PC or across multiple people, there's no way to have like multiple counts. Like the only way that someone like, like for me, if I was going to stream this for more than just like last night's little session, to be able to have a separate file for streaming, as well as for a personal playthrough, I would have to have two separate copies on two separate platforms because everything is cloud saved now. Thankfully, that's actually really easy to do. This game is $19.99, basically $20 digital or $35 physical. So, you know, unless you're a physical collector, go for the digital. It's absolutely worth it. You could get both this one and the first one in the in the same series for the total of $35 that you would be paying for the physical copy. So, yes, we'll we'll step past this because it won't actually auto-save over this, and this is just the stream file that I did anyways. I will switch back to that stream file later to show some of the bugs that I found. But let's go through this. Opening selection. Pick your character. This is the entirety of your character customization, male or female. Customize your academy. You can choose, hey, I want to pick, you know, one of these as my design. Oh, I have this little Phoenix looking thing. And we'll choose our name, you know. Sleep Incarnate. We'll just go Sleep Academy. Start the game. That is entirely a customization for this. Here we go. Long ago, Valtheria was united under one banner. Then one day, the Dragon of Darkness appeared, and with it came legions of monsters. Our ancestors, united in arms, fought valiantly against the dragon and sealed it away for all eternity. But at what cost? The damage was done. Valtheria was united no more. Today, there are four nations within Valtheria. Monsters still run the lands, and to combat them, the nations work together to build, <laughs> build hero schools. The graduates of these schools protect the people of Valtheri, enabling us to live in peace and harmony. And now you will lead us with one as a principle. You can see, there's parts that was like, I'm catching this after the fact. There's, you know, built hero skill, you know, the built instead of build. There's already some dialogue issues in there. So younger readers who don't have the quite the same skills, or like myself streamers, trying to read that, that is going way too fast. It's a knit. It's a nitpicking, but it is a, a thing. Here is going to start seeing, like, or looking at that thing, but that's our story. There's basically, hey, this is this world called Valtheria. You know, it's separated into four nations. Monsters still roam the, the world, so we have these academies for people to train to become 
those who fight monsters. If you're a fan of Ruby, it's a very basic premise. It's a similar premise. Um, now, how, how you go from there, you know, each one goes differently in different directions, obviously, from that basic premise. Just like anything, you know, Tron versus Sword Art Online. Both are about people trapped in a video game, but they have completely different how they go about them. So I'm not holding that against it. But that's our basic story. And throughout the course of the game, you'll have these little visual novel segments, which I'll demonstrate one later in between, like, the months uh, of the school where you, you get to interact with, you know, your your fellow faculty members, your students, etc. And there's where the story comes from, as well as your quests. Going into what we already see on like the, the store's description page, you have 10 years to fight that dragon. It's return, trying to awaken or return or something to that effect. Basic RPG premise. Whatever. Graphics going on. You can see we have here these really well-drawn, you know, character models up here. But then you have your gameplay ones and they're little chibis. And I know some people will complain about the chibis. I do not mind the chibis. But they are chibis. Now, combat for this. I'm going to skip past this section here a little bit to demonstrate how the combat is. Like, I'll play through it real quick to get to the tutorial stuff because I had a live person on my stream, and despite the fact that it was the middle of the night, and she complained that it was a boring game because when you get past this little section with three combats, it is very reading heavy. Now, the combats are pretty basic here and it's better to demonstrate it with multiple player characters so i will skip this section now and come back when i have all three of my first initial students all right so we're back here we've just gotten finished that little thing it's like three little fights demonstrating the combat system basics but like i said it's better to demonstrate that when there's multiple characters a little bit further on because this early on it's like yeah this is how you do it but you don't really get to see it in action until you have more students so here's the beginnings of the school management sim. And this is where I lo started losing that viewer because this is very handholdy. It's a lot of reading. I don't mind that. I love, you know, Planescape Torment is one of my all-time top games. You know, I don't mind iso those big old isometric CRPGs, lots of reading. I like visual novels. Other people don't. And this is where you're going to get very heavy on the visual novels. It's going to be reading to you. It's going to be teaching you the very basics of every little thing. So here we go. He's going to talk about, you know, you can see it's highlighting stuff. Now I got to do these. Now, here's one thing that I did mind complain about. Let me come in here to the menu. Settings. Your invert controls for your camera, rotation, and zoom are defaulted to on. Just a heads up. This is, this is on both PC and Switch. I have confirmed it on both. So it's probably the same on other consoles as well. But... Yes, it is there. It's annoying. It's disgusting, personally. But that's a per it's a personal preference thing. And most people I know wouldn't want that. So you can see, okay, yes, this is your little basics. Yes, we're talking here. But anytime I go into anything new here, it's son tons of these little, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this. So, for example, I want to go into, say, the research menu. Automatically, you get to divide into three categories here. Now, it wants me to go into the building category here. But let's say I go I want to go check out, hey, let's see what, what these all are here. Academy. Okay, well, you see these icons? Well, go ahead. Now go to these, do the thing. Dormitory 1. I cannot back out. Okay, I can, that one does let me. When I first did it, it would not let me back out. And so, like, if I came over here to gold efficiency, it's going to teach me this. I can't back out of here. I have to select this. There's a point of no return in testing this where it's trying to teach you these things. And now the game wants me to do that, but that's in progress. You know, I have to cancel that out. Come over to this one. Pay for that one now. Yeah, do that separately. And anytime I go into any menu, you get just all of these little things. Now, it does not go for long, but it does have the, hey, you have to do it the way we want you to do it aspects to it. And for younger gamers, that can be, or those who have low patiences, that can be problematic. You know, here, go collect this thing. 
walk through, talk this, do this, do this. Okay, now I've got to do this. And this is where it was losing my viewer. Now, my viewer that is alive is like 1920 something, so she's not a little kid. You know, we're, again, this was middle of the night. I started streaming at 11 p.m. But if you have a low attention span, it's going to lose people. You know, okay, I got to do this and just this. You get the idea here. It is very detailed. And sometimes not very well detailed. My first impression with this was that it was optimized for PC over consoles. And after playing it on the PC, I still feel that way. Everything is much better on the con on the console or on the PC. For the most part. I do think the field controls, when you get to the RPG aspects, because there's the, 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 the combat stuff, which we'll see here shortly, work better with controller than with the PC because neither one can you rebind what you want to do. So let's switch over here real quick, but you can see how this kind of works. You know, you, you go, come in here, you build your lots. Hey, I want to build my thing. You have your little quests and tasks on the side there, whatever. Both versions can be buggy right now, still early. But I, I've noticed that the, the Switch version and possibly all console versions are sl much buggier than the PC. Like the PC, I initially had, um, you know, instead of having this here in the middle that just goes this way, I have, you know, the mouse cursor. And I couldn't get it all the way to the screen to where the, you can see in the bottom right there, where the X and the advancing my story thing is, which I don't want to do that right now because that would overwrite my thing. So. I'm going to exit out of this and come back in on my save file so I can demonstrate to you the combat with actual full party and how it works. Because it's interesting how it works. Actually, before the combat starts, I want to demonstrate, I guess, the visual novel side. Because this is going to pop up as soon as I load this save. Uh, this is where I cut off at, at during the stream. It's the, the start of this month. And I had these two events. Every now and then, like between months, what you'll do is you'll advance this the story for school like one month at a time. In between months, you can go on taking uh, your students out on a single quest and I'm on events, whatever. But there will be these little event things here, like the, not rather, uh, um, as opposed to the errands, you'll have these little event things that are, you can pick from. Some Sometimes it'll only be one, sometimes it, like this, you'll have multiples you can pick from. We're going to go with Far From Home here, because this is going to demonstrate one of the buggy things that I wanted to point out. Slight little nitpick bugs. There are times... Okay, he's, we've received another quest from nearby village. The villagers, you mean? Fortunately, yes, they are all right. There was no dialogue box that popped up for me there. They're supposed to be there. I haven't gotten this far on my PC attempt, but I have noticed that there is another bug I'm going to demonstrate with this that is... Present on the console, but not on the PC. They have numerous reports of Ambicorn sightings near the village. As you can see, he is already talking still in their background. Still going with his, but he has been faded out, and I'm already advanced here. On the PC version, he has his full dialogue, like he's normally up front there, and then our character comes up with our dialogue choices, which is how it should be. On Switch version, as you can see, I have this weird thing. Or it's doing both concurrently on any time with the he's talking and I have a thing. And it does this with other characters too. It's a nitpicky thing. It's a bug that can be fixed. But it's a thing to note for the developers. Uh, so we'll skip all the rest of this and get to the actual combat section I wanted to talk about. Alright, so here we are. This is the month. Everything's already set up for it. The game doesn't really kind of tell you this, like it tells you, you'll have on, you see here on the left where you have quests, tasks, your principal tasks, this way. You'll have a point early on that says, hey, go accept a quest. And it doesn't tell you how to do that. To do that, you'll come over here to your, your end of your month thing, and then you'll see, hey, which region do I want to hit up? And here's my list of quests to go do. So I can pick any of these I want, and then you can see they'll have like the little stars for your level, recommendations, and so on. We'll just pop over this little early level one, take my characters, and go out for it. Because what I really want to demonstrate here 
is the combat system. Is it's it's interesting how they uh, do it. It's a turn-based combat, but not in the way you would think. So, you have a field map out here. All the monsters are already present, and you can zoom out, and zoom in, and turn just as you normally would. I'm gonna go for that guy over there in the corner. Now, if I can hit him before he hits me, I can get a first strike. I don't think I got one this time. This is another little bug. You saw that guy that fell down there? That does not happen on PC. It's another just optimization thing for consoles. Now, I want you to take a look here at each of their, their next to their hit points on these Ambicorns. You'll notice that red shield with a bunch of other stuff behind it. Each of those shields is a defense thing. It's uh, similar to uh, the shield or breaks in uh, Octopath Traveler and similar games like that. However, in this one, each shield is a different element. It's not like or Octopath Traveler, where you can you have they have a certain amount of elements that they're weak to, and as long as you're hitting one of those weaknesses, you break a, a shield. This one, you have to break these specific shields in order. So let's take this for example. And we're actually seeing a bug in place right now. Up in the top right corner, above where my uh, cursor is, you can see where all these are, there should be a little display screen of all three of my characters showing which one is highlighted. It's not there. So let's show this. And this didn't happen to me on PC again. This is a console bug. I'm going to use my ability, Violent Cleave. You can see I've got this AP pool that is shared by all my party members. So is my escape pool. So I'm going to do Violent Cleave. It's going to attack all three of these guys. And that was a physical attack. I'm going to do it again to break another shield on all three of these Amicorns. And now they each have a magic shield. So my character, Rodno, there, who is our my physical attacker, can't break their shields. I have to come over to my Magician. And now you can see up here in the top right, that was not at present before, I can see which character is highlighted, because they each have a different of four, effectively, elemental types. You have Physical is red, Magical is blue, Divine is green, and you'll later on get one called uh, Arcworks in yellowish, or orangish, yellow-orange kind of thing. And it's basically your tech tree. It's like you're using technology and all that. I haven't got a character with that. But if I use her to it, now she, because I'm off high enough level that are killing, but just like in Octopath Traveler, if they didn't die, it would break and they would become stunned and take more damage. So it's a similar system to if you played Octopath Traveler, but it's also... A, its own in that it has a unique order that you have to break the shields in. In these characters, in the case of these guys, it has to be physical, physical, magical. There's other enemies that I can't in this quest access that are physical, magical, magical, physical to, to break their shields. And as you see, defense is broken. Now, she's doing enough damage that she can kill them. She's stunned, so she can't do it, so I gotta switch to another character. If I do, say... This guy, his divine, he's not going to do hardly anything. So if I come back to her, again, she breaks, does a huge chunk of damage, just like a, a crit. Now, there is no experience gained from combat, but there is gold. The only reason you should be grinding in here is for money. That said, there is another bit of a glitch with this system. There is, right here, this treasure chest is not present on the PC version, at least not as far as I've played. But it was there very early on. And I think it's that one, or this one back here that you can kind of see through here. I can't access right now. One of those two has a research tome for an additional student that I can have. You have to do things to unlock the max amount of students that you can have. If I go back to the weekly management aspects you can see i had this fourth unnamed student who takes on the picture of one of my other students usually adjacent to them so you usually ilyanka there my mage and they just kind of exist and that's a bug that's not present on the pc version because i don't have that thing there so 
I, I enjoy this game. I have a lot of fun with it. It's early on. It's not for the impatient. But, you know, if you've played the Persona games, especially Persona 4 and 5, where they take 10 hours or so to really get started and let you have full freedom, you're well aware of what's going to happen with, uh, you know, slow burns. So that's that's a personal preference thing. I don't mind the slow burn. You can kind of see, like, my visibility range is weird, and it's like, it feels like it's popping things in, but it's not like, hey, I can't see them over there. It's just it's populating the grass. That may be something that bothers certain players. It doesn't bother me. Um, you know, so it's a personal thing. So let's teleport back and show you what the end of the month thing is. I want to talk about another thing that I thought was a bug at first. You have your end of month report. Now, when you start the game, it is the start of winter of the year 1300 in game. You go through the winter, you go through the summer of 1300 or spring of 1301. And then you get to summer. And during this, those two first seasons, the amount of points that you get for all these, you see these little plus three, plus twos, are they start at plus 10 for each. And then you, as you improve, like I have an improvement to my gym, which is where the physical, that red one is, and a 50% increase, which is why it's three versus two. Once you hit summer, it drops from 10 base to two base. And I don't know why that is. It's the same with your research. So if we go look on the far right over here, you can see arc stone efficiency is 10 out of 20. I've been doing that for five months now. And yeah, it's, it's popping. Hey, a student is ready to rest. I want to show what I was talking about here. I have Elias, Ilyana, Bianca, and here's my blank one. This is a non-student that just shows up as whichever last student I had by them. If I try to go to schedule, there they are. They're just a student right there. And it's a bug. It lets me have a fourth student for doing these errands for example you know if i have okay this one the planes monsters over here i can select them but i can't use the others right now because no one has any stamina they all need to rest But you can see now now that same character that fourth one is now showing us Ilyanka. This is a bug in this this that I hope they fix in the consoles. Um So there it's just kind of a warning up front. Overall thoughts on this. What do I do I would I recommend this game? Absolutely. If if you have the patience to get through the first like half hour, hour or so of tutorials and having it read it to you and tell you how to do this that and the other constantly it's a fun game it's a if you you know if it's gonna be you know this is the the time is not passing here you know where i have access to upgrade buildings how to you know decide what my students are going to study or rest or whatever etc and so on if you're, you know, you're willing to, to do the work and get past that, it's well worth it. It's well worth it. It's, good. it's got a lot of fun to it. That said, uh, console players, be aware there are these small little nitpicky bugs initially. Um, there's nothing game-breaking that I've seen so far. And again, I've only played for about three hours on each version, two, three hours on each version. Uh, there's three version hours on this and like an hour and a half on PC. Console is perfectly adapted. Everything on P the console, it's what it was built for. Um, or PC. It's designed for PC. Console, there's a lot going on on the screen here. You, you can see this was kind of designed with mouse and keyboard in mind. But it works. They, they have it, you know, I press Y and I have access now to this submenu. So it's a couple extra steps than just using the mouse to select, hey, I want to check my achievements. Which, speaking of achievements... There are in-game achievements, and as you can see, if you complete them, you get bonuses. So, absolutely, 
don't you know don't shy away from it on the console that said like i said earlier digital versions steam uh the nintendo eShop, playstation store etc it is $19.99 not sale just $20 us with the first game being $14.99 or 15 bucks physical copy is $34.99 us again your regional equivalents uh, if it's pounds, like we have 19.99, I think it would be 17 pounds 99, something equivalent like that. If you're English, um, so unless you're a dedicated physical collector, go for the digital copy. It's like 2.8, 2.9 gigs. Um, it's fun. I enjoy the combat. I think it's interesting how they did it. You know, it's you know, if you like Doctor Path Traveler's combat, you might like this one. The fact that you get to pick each of your students, like, rather than being a speed-based, turn-based, like, every character has a turn based on their individual speed, it's, okay, you have, you know, two, three, however many turns based on your students, and the monsters each have a turn, um, and you get to pick which students to do, too, you can have that strategy in there, and you can, you have to set up your skills with your students, let's go to student info. You know, if I come over here to the left, you know, these here on the right, I can pick, I only can pick two skills. You know, so you have to build your strategy around that. And you see the proficiencies here. When you go on these quests, you know, it tells you, you know, enemies, 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 what types of enemies you're expecting. You know, physical, so early on, physical, magical. Your cleric is kind of pointless early on for combat. He's there for heals if you need him, but... You know, later on, we'll get a technician character. Um, all three of my students so far are story-based. I don't know if there's ever a point later on where you have randomly created students because of your ability to have more students than it allows. Like, right now, I have that research book that I picked up. But, you know, if I go into research options, there is no option in here anywhere that you can see for extra students. And the game mentions the prestige system, which is what that D up top is with the 0 to 90 in it on the top left. But it hasn't yet explained near the end of my first year how to raise my prestige. So there are definitely nits to pick, even with the main PC version. Of Sometimes it feels like it's holding your hand, and other times it feels like it doesn't explain enough. Um... It's perfect. It's designed, you know, as like it's rated at low left level for kids. But there's times that's like, this might not be perfect for younger kids because of their reading proficiency or what have you. Um, but yeah, I enjoy it. I'm looking forward to seeing what more with this game. I'm hoping that they get a patch out for the console soon to fix these little nitpicky things that I've brought up. Um, you know, like I said, we had that one spot in that one little thing where. My character didn't pop up at all with the dialogue option. And it's like, oh, you mean this? I'm like, wait, what? Did I pick something? I didn't see something to pick from. And there's other times where it overlaps my thing over theirs. And I have to, like, read the faded text of theirs because it's passed away. That said, yeah, it's a good game. It's not amazing. Um, you know, I think it's better than Harvestella. You know, I know a lot of people were, were felt I was rather critical on Harvestella. I enjoyed Harvestella, but it was, again, it was good, not great. This one, I think, has the potential to be maybe not great, great, like 10 out of 10. But I can see an 8 out of 10, you know. Especially for the PC version. It's well worth the $20 price tag. You know. It's a 10-year story. I don't know if after you beat it, you have a endless mode or what's going to happen that. Or if there's a new game plus or anything like that. I'm eager, eager to find out. I hope you guys are enjoying this game. I don't know. It's got mixed reviews on both it and the initial one on Steam. But I like it. And I know some of the others out there. Uh, you know, the, the guys over at Switch Up, where I first heard of it. They liked it too. So I hope you'll give it a chance. And I hope you enjoy it. I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!